is um, this is uh, a situation on a price chart at the hard right edge. So the hard right edge is where price is in, in the here and now. This is all people would have known at that moment in time, right? Now, what this price action does is it gets people, if you're not in it down in here and, and you, you miss it and you just see this big strong move, what this price action does is it catches your attention. You couldn't take advantage of it, but you're like, oh shit, I want to get involved buying the said currency, right? In this case, it's the Canadian yen. Reason for the, the move up was obviously uh, the, the BOC um, unexpectedly raised interest rates. Now, if you did, like I say, if you didn't get in that initial move, this is this is price action that will get you excited. It'll get you horny, right? Make you want to take a trade. When I'm talking about um, putting yourself in the shoes of, of other traders, what I'm what I'm I know that sounds like so wishy washy. It's unbelievable, but trust me, it's not. You look at that price action, you go bingo. That's a piece of price structure that would get someone excited the reason it would get someone excited is because it used to get me excited or maybe it still does get you excited but what you don't do wh when you learn how to trade with me is you that you don't let that drive your your um behavior you don't make, make allow that to make you take a trade so what happens is then when when trade when price pulls back you've got to be aware that this structure has created some hysteria it's got people very very excited and wanting to take a trade now then as price starts to to sell off what type of traders looking to take a, a trade here right and then it does start selling off what type of traders looking to go along you guessed it i won't write it out completely rt short for retracement trader Right, a retracement trader is 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 super excited to take to take this trade and get involved. Now here's the thing. So we haven't done anything yet, we're just witnessing their behavior. So if they go long, right, and let's say they, they go long in here, where do the place the stops? This is not rocket science, right? They place it here because they're not gonna place it down in here. And why would they place it here and not down in here? Well, because you've done this, you've taken these trades and you've been faced with the same dilemma. What's the dilemma? Well, the dilemma is when price elongates like this and you get this massive, massive impulsive move, that creates a dilemma. Let's say this is 200 pips, which it more or less was, I think. Um, that creates a huge dilemma because the trader anticipating an entry on a pullback as price comes down and starts to head higher, they're, they're nervous of that entry, right? Because they're fully aware that that could, that could reverse, but they're so excited by the move up. They're like, no, it's an interest rate rise. This is definitely heading up. But I can't place my stop down here because my risk's going to be too big, right? My, my reward to risk ratio is going to be upside down. I don't want to do that. I maybe don't have the account size. I don't want to do that. If I if I if I take a small, tight entry, then I'm going to be able to place my stop just below this structure and get a really uh, really nice entry. Trade the most amount of lot size possible, and uh, everyone's uh, everyone's a winner, right? This elongation creates a dilemma. They, they, they really would want to go down in here because they know that they could get caught short with the pants down up in here because it could it could retrace, stop them out and then continue higher when if they'd been down in this area, that wouldn't uh, be an issue for them. But th it's a dilemma. How do we know this? Because it's your dilemma. You've had this dilemma before. I've had this dilemma a million times. This is this is how you you step into the shoes of those other market participants. What you're really doing is you're stepping into your own shoes, right? Of how you behaved historically and how you've thought about this stuff before in the past. So the stops go below that level, and I've got to keep going on because obviously um, uh, it, the drawing doesn't stay on the uh, the thingy majig if I move forward. Right. So the stops about, and now they're looking at the decision and they're, they're looking at it and they're kind of happy about that, right? And then it starts to pull back, and now oh, not so sure, and they're like, "Oh damn!" And they're like, "Oh no, that's good. It's it's heading up." And what this does is this allows anybody who was scared to have took that initial entry, this allows people to take this entry, right? As it pops up here, this is another area where they'll place stops. Now it'll also what will also occur is they'll place them under here as well. So what you'll get is you'll get a you'll get some people who think, "Well, I'm going to just nip it off with a tight stop here," and you'll get clustering of stops in here or you get someone who says oh, it's still a bit tight i don't want to go down in here because that's like miles away i'll go here because it's the nearest point in in, in of protection that 
I, I, the trade's still valid. I'll go there. So you'll get an accumulation of stops building because these people who went who went long in here have not bounced yet. They they're expecting new highs and uh, price to continue above here. That hasn't happened. So as it starts to come back against them, they'll be holding those positions, right? Now you'll get the odd person who who, who will exit, right? That you know we can't legislate for that. Some people will. Most won't. Why? Because agreed, and it hasn't played out yet. Structurally, it hasn't done what anybody in the right mind would would want it to to do. If you if you were taking a retracement trade, right, and you're going long, you're not exiting here. Your exit plan is somewhere up here. Uh, for a start, it, you know, from a reward to risk ratio perspective, it doesn't make sense to bounce here. This is what you're thinking. The trend is your friend, and it's gonna it's gonna follow through. So these people are still in here. They haven't bounced yet. In here, more people are entering who m were maybe slightly nervous of entering off that first situation. Because as I said, it is a nervy situation because it, because they're presented with that dilemma. As price develops and structures start to develop, right, as it goes along, more people will get uh, bullish about it. More people will be confident about it as it moves forward. Right, so continues up. So we've got stops there, we've got stops there, and we will have the odd savage who has a stop down in there. And we have another move up. You would get people going in in there. Okay. So you're going to get some stops under here as well. Uh, but mainly they're going to start accumulating under these structures because you wouldn't want to be too close to that uh, that price action. You don't want to get uh, knocked out of it. So in here, sorry, before I get to that, in here, this pullback, this is a 20 period moving average. It's crossing the 50. This is very, very typical behavior of that type of trader who's looking to take that trade. It makes a new high in that local structure. Granted, it doesn't take those out, but it pulls back and look, right? You get a doji spinning top type trade followed by an engulfing candle at your at your rising 20 and your rising 50 that's just crossed that's a long entry by anyone's standards you get breakout traders going in so you're going to get people put stops under here as well now so stops under there stops under there and stops under there so we go forward boom some stops have been done boom some stops have been done anyway it goes on and i could i could carry on and could carry on but basically what i'm trying to show you is that the stops that are below this structure are still in play, right? They're still, they haven't been nailed yet. Anybody who went in late and was trying to be cute and maybe stick stops below here, they all got creamed in there. Traders who went in who were a little bit more uh, confident of the move higher in here, they've just been done. They either got done here and they've just been done proper in there, right? So then, them stops have now gone. There's a there's a load of stops still residing here. Now, this this is real, right? This is a central bank uh, unexpected intervention, currency land, uh, a rise in interest rates is exactly what uh, ex exactly what drives uh, the vast majority of cur currencies uh, higher. Uh, and, and so, um, especially when it's unexpected, this moves right. But think of it from a bank's perspective, right? A, imagine a bank has to do some business, investment bank, and it wants to go long too, right? It wants to it wants to be a buyer. It wants to go long. But everyone wants to go long because everybody's seen this massive move up. Everyone's read the news. So everyone knows that this is heading higher. The problem is for the bank is that it can't, it can't do business with everyone else. If everyone's long, then everyone's long and there isn't enough people to take the other side of their in, in massive positions. If you just think about that. So what do they need? They need selling, right? They need a lot of selling to occur. Well, this move up created a lot of buying, number one. Number two, it created a lot of potential buying that, occur that has occurred in these swing points. So where these people have been going long to try and get in this stuff for this to, to head higher, what ha what's happened is they placed their stops in really obvious places. And those stops equal, remember the bank wants to get long too, sell orders lots of selling because there was lots of buying there was lots of potential buying that turned into actual buying as price bounced off these levels etc and create the structures as it moved forward so the bank wants to get long 
everybody's long but it can't get long when everyone's long so it needs to induce and seduce and manipulate price to stop some of these people out and to force those stops to, essentially what that is doing is that's forcing the selling it's forced selling so as those stop losses get triggered because you're a buyer you take a buy order to exit your position you must sell right those stops get fired as price comes back against those traders and the bank gets off its ability to do some seamless buying efficiently in, the, in those efficient zones in, in where price action uh, dips into and, and triggers these stops and is manipulated uh, in, that, in that way for, for that reason. So that selling triggers and the bank gets to do, uh, gets to do some buying goes long. So and apologies for that drawing because it's kind of horrible. So it's not wrong that you want to be long this stuff, but you've got to time it right. So what I would like to see is I would like to see a market manipulation continue. Do everyone stops and then look for a failure to head lower and then get on the train to the upside because that's going uh, to likely uh, be the player. So we want these stops to get creamed. This is the Canadian yen. Make sure the stock market's heading higher as well. That's obviously good news for Canada. Uh, check the oil as well and make sure the stock market's going higher. Bad news for the yen. And what this drop is doing as well is it's inducing people, you guessed it, to sell. Right? So look for this selling to continue and then look for a trap and then get on it uh, to the upside. And that